Hello and welcome back to a new update for an unwound clockwork. And oh boy, do I have some nice things to show this month. Um, mainly because Inka was with me for another two and a half weeks in January and we started working on the visual post-production of the boss office scene. But this time I thought, let's hear what Inka can tell about it. I am Inka and I am working since two years with Valentin for the post-production of the movie. Um, this month we have been focusing on the new scene involving the character Herzenfeld. The first challenge was that the new figure, as it has removable mouth parts, it has a fine line that connects the ears with the mouth, um, which allows for a very nice um, emotional facial expression and like bigger movement when he's chewing, because that's like basically what he does. But then we had the challenge to remove the fine line to get like a smooth surface in his face. There was a funny incident because actually when designing the figure uh, we thought that uh, we could use like the little mustache that he has. So the actual part of the face where you see the line is smaller so we don't have to track that much. Yeah, turns out that was not so smart because in the end we had to track the line and the mustache to get a good result. And then we used a After Effects tool which is called Content Based Filling. So with the track that we made in Mocha, we would generate a mask and then this mask would get filled with what the program thinks should be there instead of the line. challenge when defining the look for the new scene was the fact that the room of Herzenfeld has no windows. So how do you light and shoot a room with no windows? The solution is to shoot each wall individually with different lightning and then in the end stitch it together. And it's quite complicated to find a way how it looks natural because of course you don't have a single light source that lightens up the room but you have so many different ones that you in the end form to one big room but it also gave us the pleasure of not having to deal with blue screens for once <laughs> Yeah, it was a huge pleasure to see how these scenes we shot just a couple of months ago now already came together to form the final images I had in mind. And the difference between the animation and the finished post-production is really great in this set, mainly due to the complex lighting conditions, I think. But yeah, post-production in stop motion does so much more than wire removal, rig removal and a bit of uh, color grading. So yeah, I'm really pleased with the results and I'm extremely grateful for Inka's time and talent. So thanks a lot, Inka, you're really awesome. Now we have finished a handful of shots from this scene and know the look we want to achieve and how to get there. 
and so we are quite confident about the remaining shots of the scene. And if everything goes to plan, we will continue in summer with this task when Inca has a bit more time for it. But if you want to see a bit more from this VFX breakdown of this wide angle shot, then I have a longer version available for my patron supporters, where I also included the animation, the movement of the boss character in this scene. My second task of January was working on this jellyfish creature I'm making for the scrapyard environment. Um, first I bent and soldered and also polished all this intricate sheet metal components, which will eventually form the head of this jellyfish creature. In order to set it apart from its environment and all the other working robots, I decided I will gold plate all the components of this creature. And so in preparation for that I also polished all the parts. So looking at the sheer number of parts I had to gold plate, I think 50 or something, um, I decided I will also need a better way to do this because uh, yeah, in the past I only did it with uh, just a wire and doing it piece by piece and holding it uh, manually to the electrodes and everything. And this would have been much too slow. So I took the opportunity to create this neat little tool, which now helps me to gold plate four pieces at once and also is much more convenient to handle than a wobbly wire. So that's a little tool project on the side. And with this, I was able to gold plate all the parts. Um, I will go in a bit more detail about the process when I make a video about the jellyfish creature. But um, just for now, uh, gold plating consists of four steps usually. Um, first, I need to polish and clean everything thoroughly. Um, then there's also an electrolytic degreasing solution, which removes all oily substances from the surface. Then it gets nickel plated. This is necessary because gold can dissolve into copper and you need um, a boundary layer between the brass copper alloy and the gold. And finally, above the nickel, there's some actual gold. Only a couple of nanometers, but it's enough to produce a very nice shiny layer. And I was able to do this with all the parts and they look so nice now. So originally I wanted to finish the entire jellyfish in January, but um, I didn't find enough time and I was also still looking for a nice material for the head of the jellyfish. Um, there's a light bulb in the center of it, which illuminates the head from the inside. So I needed a material which yeah, looks nice when illuminated from the backside. And luckily I was able to visit my printer's friend again, who had a big assortment of uh, Japanese papers, which are probably ideal for this case. They are rather rigid with long fibers, but also very thin and have nice textures. And so I was able to uh, pick two of them and get some sample materials, which should be enough to create the jellyfish head. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to do this in February then. Now about the robot kits. Um, honestly, they were a major task in January as well, because a surprising number of people have decided to yeah, get one of these kits. And I'm extremely grateful for that. Thank you all so much, everyone who has purchased a kit. Um, yeah, it's extremely relieving for me to know that I will be able to pay my rent for the upcoming year. And you're a major contribution to this. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, with this uh, surprising amount of kits I'm going to make, it was also quite a lot of work. And especially in this first month, I had to plan everything, order all the materials, get the laser cut parts I'm going to need. And also this first shipment includes the, I think, most number of parts or at least the most complex parts of this kit. So yeah, let's have a look at it. Okay, so um, these are the contents of your first kit. And yeah, let me quickly go over it so you know that you have everything. You get a backplate, 
two of these square rods, um, three gears, um, one of them is actually two gears stacked on top of each other, um, two oddly shaped bronze sheet metal parts, and a total of eight washers, um, two of them are very thin, and six screws of various lengths. Um, so those are the contents. Um, be careful when opening the little matchbox so these washers uh, don't get lost. Um, but they're about the smallest parts from the entire kit. So before jumping right into the assembly process, let me tell you a bit about the manufacturing of those parts. Um, all parts beside the screws include some aspects of handcrafting, of course. Um, the backplate as well as the bronze sheet metal components were laser cut but on the bronze sheet metal I hand polished one side of them to have it nice and shiny and on the brass backplate I added some threads and also reamed one hole before giving the entire piece a brushed surface finish. So I'm playing around with different surface finishes here to give the entire character a bit more um, variety in its appearance, otherwise all the brass and bronze components would be quite monochrome but by making some components polished, they really pop out visually, while the brushed components, especially over time, will be very um, dull and be a bit more in the background. And I think this can really help to set the brass gears apart from the brass backplate, for example. Um, well, about the gears, um, I'm not able to manufacture gears all by myself yet, and even if it would be a lot of work, so I bought factory-made gears but um, the factory finish was very unsatisfying, to be honest. It was really torn up and scratched and not nice at all. So I decided to give each of the gears a polishing myself on my little lathe. And so, yeah, they are now nice and shiny. Um, the surface finish is not perfect yet. There are some tiny scratches remaining. And usually one side is nicer than the other, so you can make sure the nicer side will be in front. But overall, it's much better than the factory finish. And I think some tiny um, yeah, machining marks are nice to see that is how it was made and handcrafted. And those two brass rods were machined completely from scratch in my workshop from stock material. Um, they include a couple of holes and threads and also these two rods at the ends, which were pressed in, and also this little nose feature on one end, that's where the legs will be added at some point. And in the technical drawing, this here is a right angle, and at the last moment I decided to use a ball-headed end mill to give it this nice inside curve, which is a bit more rigid and also looks quite nice, I think. I hope you agree. And at last, those washers I cut off from a piece of brass tube. Um, I originally wanted to buy them, but I couldn't find them in the sizes I needed. So yeah, that's the solution I went with. And then of course I had to deburr each and every one of them, and those were quite a lot. Um, the sizes are 7.5 millimeters, 5 millimeters, 2.5 millimeters, and 0.5 millimeters, and two of each. And the screws are um, also factory made, but um, turned and have a nice surface finished as well. And we have two pairs of 12 millimeter length, two pairs of 10 millimeter length, one pair of eight millimeter length and one four millimeter length screws. Now for the assembly. Um, we start with this brass back plate and first we turn it over. Um, you can recognize the back side because it has my little hallmark down there. Um, so that's the back, and from this side we're going to thread in two screws. We use the 8mm screw on this hole on the right side here, um, like this, and one of the 10mm screws on the hole on the right, like this. And we screw them in all the way so that the screw head is flat on the back side of this back plate. Then if we turn it over we have two nice rods sticking out in the front. Okay so next we will take one of these square rods and arrange it like 
this. So the two holes on the back plate line up with the two frets on the rod and the nose on the rod is on the downside and on the inside kind of. And then we use the short four millimeter screw on this hole up here and screw it in like this. Don't over tighten it yet, it's nice if you can still adjust the leg so the lower the lower hole is also lining up. Yeah, we leave it like this for now and next we take one of these 2.5 millimeter washers and put them over the shorter of the two screws, like on the left side. And after the washer we're going to add the little extra gear. Um, also just putting it over the screw like this. Um, and then we're taking the second of the two leg bars and also arrange it below the back plate so the threaded holes line up with the holes in the back plate and now it might be a bit flimsy because we need to stack up a whole lot of things before we can screw that in. Um, first we take one of the five millimeter washers and put it on the hole like this and then we take one of the tiny 0.5 millimeter washers and add them on the gear stack like this. And then we take this polished part and add it onto the gear stack. And then we take the second 10 millimeter screw and try to get it all the way through all the holes so it eventually screws into the leg part like this. Exactly. And like on the other side we leave it a bit of wiggle room so we can adjust the lower hole to nicely line up. So the next thing is we take the second of the 2.5 millimeter washers and put it right above that hole here. And then we take this double gear and just pop it in. Um, and we just leave it like this and take the second of the 5 millimeter washers, put it on the screw stud here and then add the large gear over it and this should nicely mesh with the smaller of the two gears on the stack. And then we use the second of the 0.5 millimeter washers and add it also onto the big gear like this. And the last step might also be a bit tricky. We're going to use this very long tube washers like this and the other down here on this hole and then we need to line up this this sheet metal component so it pops whoops now I ruined it and lastly we take the remaining sheet metal component with the shiny side up again and line it up over those two gears make sure it pops in up here and over the screw and the two holes should line up with the washers over over the holes. So yeah, after everything is popped in, um, we can add the long screws, the 12 millimeter screws. Might be a bit fiddly to get in because all the holes need to line up. Um, turning the screw can help for this, but eventually you should be able to get it through. And same procedure for the second one. Pop it in, wiggle it through, and tighten it. Yeah, and before we tighten all the screws completely fixed, let's try if everything rotates nice and freely. Yes, it does. Oh, what a pleasure. Okay, and finally we can quite thoroughly tighten all the screws so they don't get loose over time. That's how the assembly should look at this point. Um, so really nice and compact with nicely turning gears. Um, they, should, they should be really freely turning, sounding like this. Ah, what a pleasure, don't you think? Okay, so yeah, I think this is kind of the most complex assembly as it's really the heart of the character and yeah, I really hope it runs as smoothly for you as it did for me here.
I think that's about it for now. Um, I wish you good luck and fun with the assembly of your robot's heart. Um, should you run into any troubles or difficulties, please reach out to me. It's also the first time for me doing something like this and yeah, any feedback is appreciated. And yeah, we will manage to solve any problems if some occur, I think. And yeah, I'm already looking forward to making next month's parts and um, also finishing that jellyfish, which will be a main thing in February, I think. And also there will be something big and new sitting on the desk behind me in the next video. So that's also something which I'm looking forward to and I'm a bit nervous about. So yeah, um, we will see. So um, yeah, thanks a lot for watching and for continuing your support for an unbound clockwork. It's much appreciated. Um, see you next month again. Bye bye. Das passt doch nicht. Also so, ich bin jetzt ja kein Experte, aber ich habe das Gefühl, da stimmt doch irgendwas nicht.